Hello, I'm Scott Borders, and welcome once again to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we find ourselves in Westport, Indiana, in front of this beautiful covered bridge. And joining me are two gentlemen who are going to tell us a little bit about that, Norman Layton and Tom Minky Dick. And uh, Norman, I'm going to go with you first and just kind of give us an idea about the history of the bridge a little bit. One of the most memorable things that I remember about the bridge is in 1959 when we had a flood and uh, the water was running right through the windows of this bridge right here and uh, a lot of the, I was only about 19 or 20 years old at the time, but a lot of the old timers seemed to think that the bridge was going to go. Well, it didn't. And uh, it was running through the windows of that house right there. In 19, 1880, when the bridge was built, uh, this was not the only momentous occasion uh, that happened around here because in 1880, uh, Penn Central Railroad put the railroad through Westport. And two means of transportation were opened up to the people of this community that hadn't been here before. And uh, of course, uh, the bridge was closed in uh, about, what was 74, Tom? It was closed and uh, uh, wasn't, uh, well, it took a lot of money to get it refurbished. And uh, through a, a grant from the Historical Society, National Historical Society, maybe Tom could address that more, but uh, they finally got the money and the bridge just sat there in disrepair for several years and it was going down. And uh, they finally got that grant to uh, repair it and uh, stripped it down to the bare essentials and replaced a lot of it. And uh, I remember a couple incidents that happened when I was down here about every day, just living up the road. And uh, this whole area right over here had sawhorses on it one day and all the weatherboarding on the bridge was spread out on those sawhorses. And it, this was there for, I don't know, two days. I was down here one day and I asked one of the workers why uh, they weren't doing anything with that. And they said they couldn't get a union painter. And uh, I, you know, I didn't know much about that. And uh, one day I came down here at one morning and there was a guy here, a painter. And I talked with him and he said he came all the way from Fort Wayne down here just to paint those, that siding on that bridge. And uh, he painted it with a, with a gun and uh, came down here the next day and the bottom side hadn't been turned over and they hadn't painted them. And I said, what's going on here? He said, well, we haven't got anybody to turn those boards over. Uh, said, uh, has to be a laborer to do that. And he said, He's not here, and that guy was here that whole day. And uh, he, uh, finally the laborer showed up, and they went ahead with the work, but uh, it kind of impressed on me. Uh, sometimes uh, things like that get in the way, uh, but that's the way it's done, I guess, with union work. And uh, another thing I remember is uh, the arches on the uh, abutments down there when they went down in there. Uh, that was mainly the reason they closed the bridge because they were starting to decay and the pieces there on the arch, I, I had no idea how they bent them the way and they you could did. see those arches from the inside of the bridge, yeah, correct? Yes, yes. And anyway, they said that they were going to replace some of them. And one day I came down here and they had a low boy uh, loaded up and they had these huge timbers but they were about that wide and as long as each one of those joints was in there. And I saw that and I thought, well, uh, how, how are they going to do this? I mean, you know, that thing was bent and uh, they uh, got a template and put on that thing was, oh, that, do you see those, Tom, when they brought them in? Uh, that was, they were that wide, redwood, and uh, they scribed uh, a part on that and, sawed it out and you can see them what they are today 
Well, let me get Tom here. Tell me a little bit about the things that you remember about this bridge or some of the history that you know. Well, I came to Westport in 1958, and this was really the only way I had to get to Westport from work. They went in there when they talked to strip that bridge down like Norman said. They replaced the rotten stuff on the end of the abutments, cut them off, put new pieces in there. Um, it was pretty amazing how 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 they could do things then. Of course, they had a good contractor. I think it was a milestone, and uh, they were big, pretty big contractor and a good contractor. And um, when the bridge was, people wanted the bridge refurbished. Some did, some didn't. Um, the commissioners applied for a grant with the Historical Society, and they got the grant. It was a 10% match grant, and I think that bridge was two hundred some thousand dollar project, and uh, the other had to be raised. So the money for that uh, match money was done pretty much locally through donations and and fundraisers, and and they finally got the money together and okayed. Uh, the construction to start and I think that started in 203 and ended in 204. Now Tom you had a message you wanted to give to the people of the community around here. You know, I'd like to thank everyone in the community for their support donations in money and also labor that went forth to get this all done here. Uh, without their help I don't know if this project would have been done or not because the county at that time just wasn't able to really put that kind of money out to fund it and and I'd like to thank everyone that uh, that came forth Tom, I want to thank you very much for joining me today on this beautiful day in Westport, Indiana, standing in front of a true piece of history in this covered bridge behind us. And thank you for tuning in to yet another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Remember, travel slowly and stop often. <laughs>